Hello, my name is Alfredo. Welcome to my piano space time. This is the main video of my performance of Johann Sebastian Bach's Prelude and Fugue in B major from the Well Tempered Clavier Book One. You can find the video of my performance at the link that I put under this video in the description. This video might be of your interest if you intend to study this work, to learn this work at the piano, as I will share a few thoughts regarding what uh, I believe I understood working on this piece to learn and perform it. Let's start playing a couple of lines and then I will introduce a few considerations. say is that I believe that the role of the semiquavers in this prelude is very different from the role of semiquavers in other Bach's works. In particular, if we take for example prelude in D major from the first book of Well-Tempered Clavier, the semiquavers are the main character, the leading actor. Instead, going back to our prelude in B major, I think that the semiquavers in this case are a commentary, a sort of accompaniment to the actual frame of the musical message, uh, the main frame that is not in the semiquavers, but rather in a three voices polyphonic uh, progression that is going through along the piece uh, from the beginning until the end and this lays underneath the semiquavers. In order to make uh, this clearer in practice I will try to play this prelude say removing the unnecessary in a, in a way of saying semiquavers and leaving the uh, three voices frame underneath them. that the backbone of the musical message is in these three parties frame, I think that when you study and also when you perform to a certain extent, the focus on your attention should be on this uh, very nice harmonic frame. So starting from the very beginning, I wouldn't shift my attention on what the right hand do in this particular two bars. Instead, I think the, the leading uh, part is something or more on the technical side. Uh, due to the, uh, to the key B major uh, that uh, includes 
um, many black keys and uh, due to the fact that we are playing in three voices and either end must play the semi quavers holding longer notes with uh, another voice so it's relatively an intricate digital texture what we are in front to familiarize with it i think that it might be useful to play at slow tempo uh, trying to key bed key bedding each note maintaining a flexible arm and wrist but making sure that during your study uh, you really uh, play in depth uh, in each key of this intricate uh, texture. I wouldn't overemphasize this, but I think I, I found for myself it's uh, an effective way to familiarize with the morphology of uh, this uh, digital texture that you must work on. So this is in practice. Once again, I'm not simply saying to, to play it slow, as naturally we need to do when we learn our new works, but to focus well on deeply keybedding each key, so that in a way your muscle, your body familiarizes with the terrain underneath, and uh, so that when you go at faster speed, there is still a good clarity in, in the semi-quavers and in general in the texture that you're playing. Because of the situation with these continuous semi-quavers that are exchanging uh, between the two ends and uh, a three uh, voices writing, uh, either end uh, often uh, are in a situation where you have a limited fingering possibility uh, due to the long notes that some of your fingers must play and due instead to the semi-quavers uh, lines that you, you need to play. And these often make impossible to use a conventional uh, good school pianistic fingering. Um, now, uh, there are a couple of basic ideas to work on this. Uh, the first is uh, that you work on those particular segments where you cannot use a natural fingering and uh, therefore playing with a physical connection between two nodes, you should take care to maintain uh, fluidity, flexibility of your arm and wrist in those obligated micro jumps among nodes. And I believe that uh, I use a careful use of pedal with very brief touches here and there will help to avoid to have sharp corners or dry notes due to the fact that you cannot uh, really uh, play through a physical linking of that. For example, going to bar 4, uh, a first moment where we find in practice these, these issues uh, is the left end. and slowly
the tension of this stretch I think doesn't help to convey fluidity. I prefer to do a little jump and with the pedal, a very brief touch, I avoid a sharp B in the bass. And I think this, I believe, is, is the way to address this. In the same bar, at the end, the, the left hand again need to do from this B to this C sharp. And again, it's not impossible if you have a, 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 a big hand to, um, to physically connect that, but I think uh, for me that's not in favor of maintaining a relaxed and fluid. Um, control of your of your body and so again a brief touch of the pedal helped me to 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 achieve I think that fluidity that I want to hear <laughs> brief touch of pedal at the very end of the bar will serve even with the right hand, the right hand I'm not sure that you can find a natural conventional pianistic fingering here to connect the G, F and E sharp I think what is better doing is to disconnect them physically like this and again playing with a little brief touch in the pedal and uh, the control of your flexibility in the arm you, you can perform a more satisfactory and fluid legato. the purpose. I play once again these two bars at slow tempo and then at regular tempo. supported by fluidity in your movements and are helped with the brief touches of pedal is bar 7. Uh, so we have the right hand with the contralto that is continuing a line started in the bar right before, so starting at bar 6. In my opinion, these are the important notes in that three parties frame that need to take your, your attention, my attention during the performance, not really the same equivalent. So I want that my movement and my pedal is helping to let those particular notes, that specific line to, uh, to be important in this, in this passage of the work. What we have at bar 7 and 8 is the contralto that is on 1, then again the only finger in my opinion that I find available is again 1 for the C, and then the left hand take the line with 1, again I prefer 
order to keep going with the band. So, I believe in this case, as often it's the case, the legato must be worked out with flexibility of movements, a bit of pedal, and uh, care in the intensity of each note that you play, so that the intensity of a particular note compared to the intensity of the note you played right before is at that, that right uh, energy level to establish a fluid legato line. Let's play slowly. And here as last example of these moments where the uh, conventional usual fingering cannot help, we have the right hand with the same equivalent this time that is doing... From here I have to take my... this D sharp, but also the same equivalent in the contralto suddenly... So I play it again... Play slowly using a fingering that is not what I, I use with the actual performance, just to show the notes. What I do in my performance is okay. so there is quite a challenge here with my pinky. Again, elasticity, fluidity, a big touch of pedal and the care on the intensity are the elements to work on to maintain fluidity and allegato effect. about this prelude, um, there are a couple of uh, tricky points in my opinion. One is at the beginning of the work uh, where I think that a finger uh, substitution, uh, a finger exchange is what, at least for me, makes the situation more manageable. And uh, in bar two, there are semi quivers that I will take with the right hand in the last quarter. I play again this line slowly. I take the D sharp with finger three and while the left hand start the semi quivers line I do the exchange with the pinky in the right hand and I take the last quarter of the bar with the right hand. Again. Three, five. Notice that the addition I'm using is suggesting instead to jump with the five from the E and the E sharp, like this. I feel that a little uncomfortable, especially because we are at the very beginning of the work and um, however, I believe that the right hand, if you study properly, has sufficient time to exchange the finger on the D sharp and in my opinion, in this case, you can even play a physical legato that 
is helping the uh, solidity of, of this bar. Another tricky, a little bit point is the bar 17, where uh, in the last line there is a fourth voice that enters in the music scene. So let's take the bar before that. So we have these semi quavers basically in the tenor and the first group, what I do, I split it between left hand and right hand like this. Played in a kind of 
uh, light mood uh, to become a sort of whistling uh, motif and um, I found that uh, to me is, is interesting also because in this way I can start with a few uh, in a sort of delicate way and then I can do that a traditional uh, idea uh, behind many fuels that what you have is a crescendo of energy from the very beginning until the very end. So a gentle beginning and through the uh, events in the polyphony the, this acquires energy uh, until the conclusion. So let's play a couple of lines and let's go ahead with a few thoughts. <laughs> a few examples about what I just tried to explain with uh, several words. Um, I start with bar 10, it's one of the many examples we can find, in particular the right hand. Uh, I'll play the entire bar a couple of times and then we'll focus on what's going on in the right hand. <laughs> Here with the right hand I play it slowly to show uh, what I'm doing. I am here arrived on the tree and I need another three notes going down to the bass. Well, I feel what I have to do is to jump and then I land with my four on the C sharp. And I do it again. concerned about doing a physical trying to be legato that is actually impossible. Rather, during my study, what I feel I have to do is to do this jump with fluidity, with elasticity, paying attention to the intensity of the notes in that uh, jumping point. And after that, uh, I try to help the fluidity with a very brief touch of pedal. Let's play again the, the bar. Uh. 
So this is a first example of what I refer to as non-conventional pianistic fingering. Maybe as a side comment, um, you might have heard about the antique way of fingering works that basically uh, was used more or less until uh, Bach's era, the, the antique way of using fingering that didn't consider what nowadays we, we do typically with uh, the thumb that is passing underneath the other fingers when you need to play a scale or something similar. And on the contrary, when you go down to passing over the thumb, at the time it was the common practice instead to, for instance, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three. Uh, and the same going down. So probably was um, much more natural for many players at the time uh, doing what I'm just doing at the piano. But I feel here there is really no choice and I think uh, the sense of music can be worked out uh, by simply doing uh, this fingering choice. Uh, let's take a few other examples with a little bit of uh, higher complications in the polyphonic uh, texture of the bar. So let's go to bar 14. Let's play a couple of times the bar. What's going on here? So right hand, slowly. I need some help with the left hand, as you will see. Again, the beginning. So I am here with one, two, three. I feel the logic thing to do is to go with five, three, and two to the next chord. That is not really a chord, it's a counterpoint um, writing. Then I proceed with one, and then I need to take these two notes. So again, a physical disconnecting. I land with four two, and I keep going. Same concept. I won't stress myself to find, to try to establish impossible physical connections. Instead, studying it, focusing on physical fluidity. Um, sound intensity, consequentiality, and eventually a little bit of pedal. Once again. several segments in this fugue where you come across this kind of uh, technical fingering issues. So um, let's go to bar 16, a little after here where we were. Let's play it. Let's see the uh, left hand. So I have Thank you. 
not saying that this is the only logic finger to adopt, it's, it's what I found for myself comfortable. accurately
Let's go back to the more conventional way of playing. <laughs> segments is uh, to familiarize very well with each individual line in the counterpoint writing. And so uh, the simple way of doing this is perhaps a couple of times uh, singing uh, each particular line in a brief passage where you want to concentrate your attention. But I think after singing you have to then switch your attention in what your finger are doing with that line and making sure that you are working to the continuity, to the fluidity, consequentiality of intensity of notes to really draw a musical line with that particular voice. Let's work as an example here at bar 21, where we have the theme in the bass and uh, we have for a while uh, all the four voices together. So I play a couple of times the bar first. particular segment. So I have this B in the contralto. Once again, to familiarize very well, not only uh, with your mind, but what with what your arm, wrist, hand and fingers are doing with that particular voice. Now let's uh, move the tension on the tenor. There is a brief line, but uh, that is completing what was happening right before a very intricate semiquavers uh, long line. So. again highlighting them. Let's try now to be more con 
continuous in that line. starting, if you remember, with the theme in a kind of light, easy manner. And of course, uh, going on with the exposition, with the second, third and fourth voice adding, we end the exposition at bar uh, 9 with a higher volume, inevitably. So let's go there. And right here, I think, uh, could be uh, a good idea uh, to imagine the choir conductor doing a to everybody. And from this moment of energy that is uh, closing the exposition, we create a contrast with a piano or mezzo piano little king that will follow thereafter. And to highlight the change in color, I change to una corda pedal right after the exposition, releasing that after a brief crescendo more or less where I stop playing. I try again. So here I'm definitely on the mezzo forte, nearly forte level of intensity, and I keep increasing this uh, so that at between bar 16 and 17, I reach another point of full energy. Then again, another opportunity for a contrast going back to a piano that will be the base to start a longer crescendo until the very end, that is, in my view, probably uh, the, the climax of uh, the energy of the fugue. So once again...
enjoyed watching this presentation. Thanks for watching and looking forward to seeing you again in my uh, next post.